Welcome to the Premier League review show for Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me just put my light on. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to start with... How is this updated? Um, we're going to start with Fulham. Now, I think this is a really good win for Fulham. Uh, and let's get into it. But I'm really concerned about Burnley. So we'll just go through the goals first. So Fulham took the lead after just four minutes. A great ball from uh, Vieto, giving it to uh, Jean-Michel Serri, who was just outside the box. And he curled it in brilliantly into the uh, top right-hand corner. There was nothing he could have done there. And it was 1-0. Uh, Hendrick got on to a cross after 10 minutes to make it um, to make it one all, and then two in two minutes from Mitrovic. Uh, first of all, a ball from Kearney, and then a ball from Vieto. Um, both times he got he got in and scored to make it 3-1. Tarkovsky got one back before half time from a corner and made it 3-2. And then seven minutes before half uh, full time, Scherler scored. Mitrovic hit the post, the ball came back out to Scherler and he put it into the corner. One thing I'd like to note is the goalkeeper Fabri was dropped for Bettinelli, who was the goalkeeper last season for Fulham. That's really interesting. But what is going on at Burnley, right? Because they've conceded 10 goals in the last three games in one week. Burnley last season conceded 39 goals in the Premier League, which isn't many. They've already conceded six. Oh, no, wait. They've already conceded seven. Oh, yeah, they conceded seven, sorry. And they've conceded three in the Europa League. It's like the defence is all, is all messed up. Maybe they need to bring in Ben Gibson. They started with the same side that they had last season with Tarkovsky, me, Loughton and Ward on each flank. Ben Gibson was on the bench. But maybe they need to bring him in. Because at the moment, they're not working. They're conceding goals left, right and centre. And that is really, really concerning. When was the last time Burnley scored, uh, conceded four goals in the same game? You know, it doesn't happen often. They were so compact last season. So compact. Last season they lost 3-0 to City. They lost 3-0 to Spurs. They did lose 5-0 to Arsenal. But, you know, it's it's it's, it's very strange. They, they were so compact last season and now they're all over the place. Next, we go to Watford and Crystal Palace. Um, so in the first half, Kapue uh, stuck his studs into the back of uh, Wilfred Zaha. That was only a booking, but looking back on it, it probably should have been a red card. You know, at the end of the day, you need to start protecting players like that because you can you can have two or three people go after a player continuously and try and you know foul him out the game. They got the win here anyway. Uh, Pereira scoring the first one. And then Holobas scoring what looked like a cross. Um, it was a cross that turned into a shot and it went in. Uh, he they made it 2-0. Seven minutes later, just before the 80th minute, Wilfred Zaha, some excellent work from him, made it 2-1. They had a great chance right at the end. Joel Ward heading wide. A really, really good start for a Watford title I thought would struggle this season. But nine points from their first three games, maximum points. That is an amazing, amazing achievement by Javi Gracia. They've already scored seven goals, which is up there with Liverpool. And that's more than Everton, that's more than Bournemouth. They've all had really good starts. It's only less than Chelsea and Arsenal. They've conceded two goals. But they've looked really, really good at, at spells. Pereira has looked amazing. Really, really important signing. Finally, we go to Newcastle and Chelsea. Uh, so this game was 0-0 at the break, and it was a bloody boring half. Um, I covered this on a live stream. 
Um, so feel free to check those out. They're ever so often. In the first half, Newcastle had 21% possession. And Chelsea had 79% possession. Chelsea had the most possession. Newcastle had a couple of good chances. Second half, 17% possession by Newcastle United. 83% possession by Chelsea. Now, that is the way he plays, yes. But 17% possession at home in a half is absolutely disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Um, so let's get into it. So uh, Shah, who was already on a booking, brought down Alonso. Looked on the replay. It wasn't a penalty. But I totally understand why the referee gave it. It looked a penalty when I saw it in real time. Uh, which was dispatched by Hazard. Um, but 10 minutes later, there was an equaliser. Yedlin... Um, he sort of used his elbow to get away from Giroud, but, you know, that's not any excuse to go down. Like, it was just like his head was here. It wasn't like he was pushing it. It was... So I think the referee Tierney was right here to let the play go. Yedlin crossed in and Hosselu got, um, got beyond David Luiz. David Luiz was just stood there. Hosselu came in and made it one all with a head. David Luiz, very, very good player, but what was he doing? He should be coming and heading that away, straight away. Four minutes later, a cross from Alonso, come off uh, Yedlin, who'd set up the um, equaliser and made it 2-1. They didn't really have any more chances after that, Newcastle. Uh, so yeah, a good win there, also on maximum points. Nine points for Chelsea through eight goals, three conceded, uh, three wins. Really, really good start to the season for them. Newcastle just at one point against Cardiff. Travelling times ahead, maybe, doubt it. Um, they have had a diff quite a difficult start. Tottenham at home, Chelsea at home. We shall see how they get on in the, in, in the coming weeks. You can excuse yeah. Um, but obviously, next week they have Man City away. Very, very hard game before the international break. And when they return from the international break, it's Arsenal at home. So a really, really difficult start for Newcastle. Who put these fixtures out? Um, but on the 22nd of September, Crystal Palace away. They'll need to get something there. They'll need to get something there. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day... It's really weird that Burnley have, was so compact, so tight uh, in the back, at the back, and then all of a sudden they're just all over the place. It's very, very strange, very strange. And I'm not having, oh, it's because they're in the, um, it's because they're in the Europa League. It's like, you don't go to sleep as a defender just because you're in the Europa League. Um, you know, they have had a very poor start to the season. Maybe they need to bring in Ben Gibson. But really good wins for the other two sides. Watford and Chelsea. Fulham get their first win as well. They're the only team so far of the promoted sides to get their three points. With um, Wolves drawing twice and Cardiff drawing twice as well. They are the only side of the promoted teams to lose twice. So, um, yeah. I don't know whether they will sort this out, Burnley. They have the Europa League. Is it Thursday? Yes, Thursday against Olympiacos. So 3-1 down, that will probably end up in, in defeat. Which means I'll be playing Sunday again and then... It's Manchester United, so it doesn't get any easier for them. Uh, but I think that a win on Thursday night would really help them. So if they won 2-0, they got through, I think that would really boost their confidence. But I think if they lose, they could be in for a difficult start to the season. They need to start to pick up some wins. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy that this has happened. Um, you know, they look so compact and so 
well run and, 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 and drilled at the back and then suddenly they are really really struggling I don't know what's caused it um, but hopefully it will all sort, sort itself out for them but I'm not having that it's because of this that it's because of the Europa League because you can't blame bad defending on the Europa League you can't you can't defend that and just say oh it's because they've been traveling like that's not an excuse that's not an excuse you can't defend like that and expect uh, to get away with it anyway thank you so much for tuning in I'm going to do a review tonight of the Manchester United Tottenham game so I hope you can tune in and join me for that thank you so much for watching my name is Mike and I will see you soon